So today I'm working on Parker's 1965 Mustang. Parker's gonna be helping me. Ashley's doing some work on the interior and we are going to be installing a ignition system in this car that's gonna give full timing control compatible with the Holly Sniper system. These guys are trying to figure out how to make more shade very efficiently. So really diving into the car, this is a 347 stroker small block Ford sitting in front of a T5. We're running a Holley Super Sniper, which just means it's the upgraded boost ready version of the Sniper. We've been using a ready to run distributor I'm gonna show you in a moment. And what we're trying to do is get full timing control without spending four or $500 on a fancy Holley supported distributor. This ready to run style distributor without a vacuum advance has worked fine, but we think we're leaving a lot of power on the table, especially down low. So what we're gonna be doing today is we're gonna be replacing it with an OEM spec Cardone magnetic pickup distributor. The Holly Sniper is compatible with a lot of magnetic distributors. Holly intends that you'll use it with one of their MSD or HyperSpark style magnetic distributors, but it's very possible to use an OEM style distributor if you know how to set it up right. While we're doing all this, we're also gonna be replacing the ignition coil. So what we're gonna do right now, we're gonna get the coil pulled off the car so that we can swap it out. And then I'm also gonna pop this distributor off. But first I wanna mark where the number one cylinder is so that it's easy for me to get the new distributor installed and clocked in the right position. So we're pulling this off. And what I did is I got the old distributor pointed towards where the number one spark plug tower was. So when I drop the new distributor in, I'll know exactly where it needs to be. While we were there, we looked at the timing marks, which is very difficult to see with this setup, but we've got it set to just about 45 degrees before top dead center on the number one cylinder. And the reason that we did that is because we're gonna to have to set a reference angle in the sniper software. The reference angle is a really important piece of this whole puzzle. So I wanna go over it so that you understand what it is and how to set it up when you're doing this on your car. In order to be able to fire the coil and control timing, the ECU needs a regular signal for each cylinder so that it can correctly track with RPM be accurate, be consistent, and not have any misfires. In order to do that, the magnetic pickup in a distributor provides a reference pulse. It does this for every time that a cylinder reaches top dead center. Now the problem with that is that if a cylinder reaches top dead center at the same time that it gets the reference pulse, it's already too late for the computer to react and to put a ground on the coil, let the ground go and trigger the spark. So in order for this to all work correctly, you have to set a reference angle. The way that Holly typically sets their stuff up is so that you provide a reference angle. That pulse from the magnetic pickup happens approximately 45 degrees before the cylinder reaches top dead center. And that gives the computer lots of time to react. The computer really could react within probably two or three degrees of when it receives the reference signal. So that allows the computer a couple of degrees to charge the coil and fire it. So what I'm doing here is I'm just aligning the magnetic pickup, that gray piece in that white oval with this tooth as best as I can. And we're gonna lock the distributor down right there. Now this vacuum advance isn't the prettiest thing in the world, but it's actually locating the magnetic pickup. The magnetic pickup would move without the vacuum advance can there. I, we, we may in the future make a block off plate to remove the vacuum advance and keep the pickup in place. But for now, we're gonna leave this in place. We're doing the super budget, trying to get the car back on the road with timing control. Pertronics, I think it's a Pertronics flamethrower bracket. And this Pertronics unit is basically an upgraded version of a stock GM HEI small cap coil or a Ford TFI coil. You can see they're very similar in their appearance. The Protronics unit was probably hotter, but we're not completely sure if this is causing us to have a little bit of stumbling off idle. So we're gonna replace it with a new Ford TFI unit. This TFI unit uses the same connector that Holly uses on their HyperSpark, on their HyperSpark coil, and should also fit in a HyperSpark um, heat sink. So this is gonna really let us have a lot of control. So I got the distributor locked down. That's lined up at 45 degrees before top dead center. The number one terminal is gonna be right about here on the cap. This goes to the ignition circuit for the sniper. This plugs in. I had to add this green wire to it. Uh, it comes with only the purple wire in it. I just used a regular single pin 
terminal you can find on Amazon, you can find all over the place. And I twisted them together because that'll make a less noisy signal going into the sniper. Connected them to the wires from this variable reluctor. We're gonna feed it back and plug it in. We'll loom it after we've made sure everything works the way that we want it to. So with the distributor in and snug down, I'm working on rotor phasing. This white mark marks the number one terminal. And with this two piece distributor cap, you can see it at my 45 degree before top dead center, this is pointing pretty much directly at the number one terminal. So right here, I'm gonna confess that I made a couple of mistakes. First of all, this rotor phasing did work, but it wasn't perfect, so I ended up redoing it later. The other thing that I made a mistake on, though, was I was not aware a Duraspark distributor actually has mechanical weights in it. I've never played with most of this Ford stuff before, and there are actually weights buried beneath the base plate in a Duraspark distributor like this, so I'm going to show you how we welded those plates up to eliminate and lock out the timing curve. Then I'm going to show you how I bent the little tab on the vacuum advance so I could really dial in my reference angle exactly where I wanted it. Alright, so I got this blasted apart real quick, and the way that this would typically work, which I didn't realize these weights were down here, but the way this would typically work is these weights, when everything's held down like it's supposed to, these weights rotate out like that, and they advance the reluctor relative to the inner shaft of the distributor, which is below this piece. And that causes the variable reluctor to put a signal on the HEI module, their DuraSpark module, sooner, and that causes the spark to happen sooner, advancing the timing. Similarly, the vacuum advance pulls on this plate and rotates it, essentially advancing the distributor because the magnetic pickup is more advanced than it was before, giving the module Trigger going to spark earlier. So what we're going to do right now is we're going to put a couple tack welds between these weights and this piece that the reluctor mounts on and that's going to keep this super solid super mounted up so we won't have to worry about anything moving and changing timing on us. A jardine in his natural habitat. Oh yeah, way you Got that all welded up. 1-800 Jardine Fabrication. Woo! Super solid now. It's a little hot, so I'm gonna give it just a minute. I'm gonna zap it all back together. So we spent a good amount of time playing with the reference angle chasing that. And I think the main problem we were chasing was that the firing order was wrong. 1-8-4-3-6-5-7-2. Mm -hmm. Never heard anybody, <laughs> but Ford. Four letter words. At this point, I really want to clarify for you exactly what I mean when I'm talking about rotor phasing. As a distributor rotates with the engine, the rotor is going to pass each terminal. Now, the spark does not always happen at the same time where the rotor is pointing relative to the ignition terminal on the cap. If the coil is triggered at 40 degrees before top dead center, that will happen at a different time than if it is triggered 15 degrees before top dead center. While it might seem obvious, it's important to make sure that the rotor is always pointing close to the intended ignition terminal when the spark is triggered. When we start making adjustments like we're making in this video, it's easy to get the rotor pointed kind of in between two terminals, and you might introduce a condition that allows the spark to go to the wrong cylinder at the wrong time. We have to phase the distributor. In order to address this, I set the crank to 45 degrees before top dead center on the number one cylinder with the rotor pointing in the general direction of where the number one cylinder was going to end up on the engine. Then I adjusted the rotor so that it was pointing just before the number one cylinder. As timing advances through its total sweep, say from 15 degrees before top dead center to 40 degrees before top dead center, the rotor is going to move from just after the terminal on the cap to just before the terminal on the cap. Yeah. So at 45 degrees before top dead center, at the far extreme of my possible sweep, I set the rotor to be just before top dead center. Then I lock the distributor down. From there, I bent the tab on the vacuum advance so that my magnetic pickup would line up with the reluctor inside of this distributor. That's probably not the best way that I could have done it. I should have made a little bracket and put a screw or something and put it where I want it. But it did work and I'm pretty happy with the solution for the moment. It's working great. All right, so check this out. Sniper coil driver mounted right here. This thing gets a ground 
the points output from the sniper, that's what the sniper uses to tell this driver when to fire the coil, and a switch 12 volt. This gray lead goes to the negative terminal of the coil. So the way that this thing works is this is like a really fast acting relay that can handle more juice, more power, more amp flow than the sniper's uh, PCB, the ECU board circuit can handle. So the ECU uses this white wire to trigger this thing. That tells it when the coil needs to fire so it gives the correct advance. And this pink wire provides positive to this, this ground provides a ground for this to operate and this wire goes to the coil. So we have the coil all wired up under the hood. This is what, this is that gray cable from inside the car that triggers the coil. So this should allow this system to function. We're gonna change some settings in the ECU and then we're gonna fire it up. So with the key on, we're gonna to go to system tuning. We're gonna to go to ignition setup and we're gonna make sure this ignition type is set to magnetic. Remember we set the reluctor at 45 degrees before top dead center. That's gonna be our reference angle. That's when the ECU gets its signal from that magnetic pickup 45 degrees before top dead center. So it has a little bit of time to react before the pistons all the way at the top. Then we're gonna set the main rev limiter. I'm gonna set this thing to something reasonable. 20,000 is a little high for this motor. I'm gonna go with um, 5,500 for now. And we can probably raise that up a little bit later. And then inductive delay is set correctly at 60 USEC. That's what's recommended for use with the Holly coil. I think the coil that we have now is gonna work with that. You can see this is freaking out. It's not accurate because we accidentally disconnected it. So we'll have to figure that out. Um, and then with that set, we're gonna go to Spark. We're not gonna run a timing table yet. We're gonna run ignition at idle at cruise and at wide open throttle, cranking timing, that's fine. These numbers are fine for right now. And then when we go to advanced, advanced ignition, we wanna make sure that our dwell is 2.0. That's right for this style of T TFI HEI coil. And the minimum signal voltage is how much signal it has to have to detect a trigger. I'm gonna start with this point, with this 0.35. This is the default for the Holly. If we have a noisy signal, we might raise it to like 0.5 or 0.75, something like that. But we're gonna go with this for now. So with all of that set, with distributor hopefully close to where it's supposed to be, we're going to crank this thing and see what it does. A good sign. Seems snappy. I think the timing needs a little more advanced because it's popping at the rear, but hopefully we have something. Yeah. Twenty degrees. We'll lock the we'll lock the distributor down, and we should be good to tune from there. So it is possible to use a sixty dollar distributor and a twenty dollar TFI coil, and probably twenty or thirty other dollars in like connectors and hardware parts on a holly sniper efi setup with full time in control so in order to replicate this on your project car with a holly sniper or a similar efi system the first thing you need to do is find a magnetic pickup distributor a lot of cars can use a gm's hei style distributor they made them for almost every v8 ever in existence you could replicate the exact same thing using that distributor if you want to keep with the ford stuff you could also use a duras park one distributor like we used in this video you need to make sure that the distributor has the appropriate gear for the cam that you're running we have an aftermarket billet steel cam so we're using a factory style steel gear you might need a cast iron gear for a flat tappet cam or a bronze gear to be really safe depending on what you're running you got to do some research on that after you have the distributor with a magnetic pickup the second thing you need to do is you need to lock out the timing you need to lock out the weights on the distributor you can accomplish this by either welding the weights together by drilling a hole through both plates and putting a roll pin in or a nut and bolt. There are several ways to lock it out, but you have to lock out the weights. After the distributor is fully locked out, you need to get the crank to 45 degrees before top dead center on the compression stroke. After that's done, you can install the distributor with the rotor pointing in the general vicinity of where you want the number one spark plug terminal to end up. 
After the distributor is installed, you need to mark on the housing of the distributor where the number one spark plug terminal is, and then clock the distributor so that the rotor is pointing just behind that terminal. That's going to allow the rotor to sweep from behind to ahead as you go from full advance to minimum advance. After that, you'll align the magnetic pickup with a tooth on the reluctor so that you are creating a pulse to the ECU at 45 degrees before top dead center. You might have to bend the vacuum advance tab or create a bracket, put a screw in. There are several ways you could move the magnetic pickup and fix it securely. That's up to you. You're going to have to be creative with that. Once all of that's done, you're going to wire the magnetic pickup to the Holly Sniper system. Once that's connected to the sniper harness, you're going to install the sniper coil driver that's included with the Holly Sniper. That requires a ground, a switch 12 volt, and the points output from the sniper to go to it. Then the output of the coil driver goes to coil negative. You can use your existing coil or you can convert to a TFI or HEI style coil, similar to what we did. After everything is wired, the distributor's in place, everything's locked up, my daughter will come and talk to us. After everything is wired up, the distributor's locked down, the rotor is phased, everything's installed, and you've double checked everything. It's time to go into the sniper settings. You're gonna set your reference angle to 45 degrees. I'm sorry. You're gonna go into the sniper settings. You're going to set the ignition type to magnetic distributor. You're gonna set your reference angle to 45 degrees. You're gonna use settings appropriate for your ignition coil. For an HEI or TFI style coil, I recommend starting with two milliseconds. You're gonna use an inductive delay of 60 USEC, whatever the measurement is, you're gonna use 60 to start with and you may increase that. Once everything's set up, you're gonna turn the key off and back on and you're gonna start the car. The car should run. You're gonna go into system settings on the handheld and you're gonna set the static timing to something reasonable. I used 10 degrees, I think, and we verified at that 10 degree mark that we were seeing 10 degrees on the harmonic balancer with the timing light at the same time that the sniper was commanding 10 degrees of static timing. Then I revved the engine up and I made sure that 10 degrees stayed consistent, that the ignition timing didn't retard as the engine revved up. If it does, you can go in and increase the inductive delay setting. I would probably increase it by 40 at a time until the ignition ends up advancing with RPM and then back off five or 10 at a time until you get it dialed in perfectly. After all of that is done, you have full timing control and you can move on to putting a proper timing map and doing some tuning on your Holly Sniper system. I hope this video has helped you. If it did, and if you want to see more stuff like this, don't forget to like and subscribe. I'm going to continue to make videos like this to help you get your project on the road, driving with as much performance and reliability as possible. Thanks for watching.